Good morning, church. I am Pastor Ty Weaver, and I'm glad you can join us today online. Um, I'll be doing announcements with you guys real quick. So we have our bulletin, and um, if you want to stay posted, you can follow our Facebook page, or you can um, watch our website at riversidelighthouse.org or uh, stay subscribed to our YouTube channel if you want to see more sermons or live streams. Uh, thank you again for joining us, and uh, let's go ahead and just uh, go over a couple of quick announcements. So um, on Sundays now, if you can make it to a live service, um, we have a 9.30 a.m. service and an 11 a.m. service uh, during this time. Uh, there are some restrictions, and the government recommends you wear a mask. Um, so feel free to come on in if you'd like to join us, but you're also welcome to join us on the live stream. We will continue to do this every Sunday. Um, next announcement, uh, we're having a service called Church on the Lake, Sunday, July 12th at Whitestone Lake at 5 p.m. So that's next Sunday at 5 p.m. At the, at the lake. We're going to have an evening service. We will have our morning services as well, but there will be an evening service. We'll all be on our own boats, and um, we'll pastor will be preaching from a boat so that should be very interesting there'll be of course just natural social distancing because we're all on boats so that works out just fantastic so if you have a boat or you'd like to watch from the shore feel free to come out next Sunday at 5 p.m. at White Stone Lake a uh, next announcement uh, Wednesdays at 8 a.m. we have a men's Bible study ongoing uh, feel free to join in and join a couple of awesome guys as they study the word together um, also on Thursdays, we have a ladies Bible study ongoing at 10.30 a.m., going through a great study. Uh, final announcement is we have prayer on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. It used to be at 11 a.m., but now it's 1 p.m. So if you see anywhere else that it's 11 a.m., that is incorrect. We apologize if there's any confusion. It's pre prayer is now, women's prayer is now on Tuesdays. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Sorry, I had to adjust to make sure I got that right. Okay, 1 p.m. on Tuesdays. So, uh, again, we are so glad you could join us today. We hope you enjoy this service. And um, we do have a couple of videos showing. And just so you're clear and just so there's no confusion, we do have to block those out on the live stream because some of it is, because it is copyrighted content. And even though we purchased the video, um, we're not allowed to show it on YouTube because it just has an auto blocking feature of copyrighted content or flagging system. We just don't want to bother with that. So we're just going to go ahead and cut the content before it goes on YouTube. So if the screen suddenly goes blank or you see a, um, oh, we have a screen that might pop up that says something like technical difficulties or something. If you see that, that's what's going on. Um, otherwise, thank you for joining us today and hope you enjoy the service. Uh, God bless you, and just um, hope you guys have a great day. Take care. So we're going to go right to worship, okay, since we're no offering, but we'll just go right to worship. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. Greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me, singing out, Jesus is alive. Empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, shout it out, Jesus is alive.
opportunity to walk with you, to talk with you, to know you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness. Lord, you never give up on us. You are so good. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in this place. Be glorified. Be exalted, O Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you. Jesus. Well, praise God. Amen. Amen. What an awesome thing that we can, we can come to God's house and worship him. Amen. Amen. I love being in God's presence. I do. You have your Bibles. If you don't, we're, we'll put it up there to help you. Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter three. We're going to talk about one of my favorite Bible stories. Um, I don't think, well, some of you have to think back a ways, like me, 
but others, it's not that far back, you know. Um, about that, when you got to about, oh, 14, 15, you started dreaming of an opportunity to drive. You wanted your license, huh? And I asked earlier in the service, they answered really quick. What did, what did the, having that license mean to you? Yeah, the, you know, that didn't work for me, Rhonda. I mean, I thought it would, but when I tried things, my keys got taken away. There was no freedom. Well, there's only freedom if I obeyed, you know. That, that's, that's a point there, though, okay, because it's true. Because I, I, I had this lead foot when I first got my license. I mean, I, I kind of wanted to, to, to see how fast cars would go. You know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a safe driver. I, I was a little scary. Uh, I, think, I think the time that surprised me the most, though, was uh, we picked up a bunch of kids at camp, uh, a friend in, uh, of mine and I, and he had a, a Mustang with a 390 Cobra-equipped Hearst transmission. I mean, it was, it was an awesome car. Chris, it was it was an awesome Mustang. I learned to clutch in that thing. It was like, you know, like that. Um, I also, the fastest I've ever been in a car was in that car. Uh, 145. The front end started to lift, though, so we backed off. <laughs> when you can't steer any longer, it's time to quit. Actually, it was time to quit way before that, but, you know, we're kids and not too bright. But we picked up these kids at Lost Lake Camp. And we decided to have a race back to the church to drop the kids off. I was in front. He let me start off because I was in a Galaxy 500, which isn't exactly a race car with a 290, you know, a 293, I think it is. Anyway, uh, yeah, a little Ford uh, V8. And anyway, I, I headed out in front of him. And, of course, I, since I had the heavier car, I got a big lead on the gravel. He was overpowered and light, so he had troubles in the gravel. He was spinning out all the time, so I, took a, I got a big lead on the gravel. But when we hit Havilla and it turns to pavement, you know, I, I knew he was going to start catching me. So I still drove like a madman down the hill. When I came into Fancher's Flats, dropped over into Fancher's Flats, I, I kicked it as hard as I could. I was going 125 miles an hour in that Galaxy 500. What got me in trouble was there was a lady in my church in a little blue Volkswagen <laughs> driving down from Camp 2, but she'd left way ahead of us, so I th thought I wouldn't catch up with her. But she was sitting in the middle of Fancher's Flats when I came over the hill. And I still had to pedal to the metal, you know, and I just went by her at 125. I think she was going about 40. <laughs> her little blue Volkswagen would, you know, she, that's what she told my dad. I don't know how fast her son was going when he went by, but it shook my car. <laughs> and, of course, my keys were yanked. Uh, that happened a lot as a kid. I just couldn't keep my keys. So freedom wasn't all necessarily <laughs> free to me, but... My parents' desire was that I would stay alive and not kill myself, which was wise on their part. But it, as a kid, you don't understand that because you think, ha, nothing can hurt me. You know, you don't realize how quick life can end when you're young and a little bit stupid, okay? So I laugh when kids tell me stories. I'm like, because I used to do all those crazy things too, so I, I, I get it. But I'm still telling, I've turned into my dad now. Don't do that. I'll take your keys. <laughs> so uh, freedom is something, though, and that has to be purchased. It comes with a cost. Always has. Always will. Uh, of course, we think of the United States when we go there, but um, it also biblically has a cost. Daniel chapter 3, I, like I said, is one of my favorite stories. It's about three young men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I love these three guys. They are young. They're, they could be late teens, like 19. They could be 20. They're right in that, that boat. They are young guys. And, and when Nebuchadnezzar had captured these young Jewish men, they had picked the cream of the crop, the smartest, when they tested them, 
Uh, they tested their, their smarts. They, they, they picked the good-looking ones, not the bad-looking, the muscular ones. I heard a pastor who is one of, one of my favorite, well, he's in heaven now, but um, one of the best Bible teachers I've ever know, known, uh, uh, Linfield Crowder, was one of the best Bible teachers I've ever heard in my life. Um, he, he shared something that I'd never heard before when he shared it, that Nebuchadnezzar not only trained these guys in knowledge, they were his bodyguards. They were ninjas. I mean, seriously, they, they were trained in all the arts. So these guys were top-of-the-line kids, but they were put in leadership roles in the kingdom. Now, Daniel, because he'd, he'd uh, shared Nebuchadnezzar's dream, had worked his way up to like number two and number three in the kingdom. He was, so he was in the throne room with the king, but these guys who were just regional leaders got called in because, see, Nebuchadnezzar had that dream, and Daniel, you know, told about the dream without having the dream really explained to me. He, he, exclaimed, he, he proclaimed the dream to him and then said, uh, you know, about the statue, and, and he told Nebuchadnezzar, you were the golden head. I think that went to his golden head because Nebuchadnezzar decided to make this. Not long after that, he made this huge statue out of gold, it was probably of himself, most my Bible scholars believe. And he ordered all these leaders, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego included, to come. Daniel got left out of this one. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to come. And what, what the king said, he ordered this. When the music plays, everyone will bow before my idol. Everyone. Everyone. So when the music played, everyone bowed but three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who stood there. Somebody else was peeking, though. They were supposed to worship the idol. I don't think these guys were worshiping the idol because they told on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were spying. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got towed in before the king. And the king was furious, you know, because this king had a serious pride problem. He was angry. He was like, how dare you guys not bow when I order it? You know I've, I've threatened the fiery furnace. I'm going to give you one more chance, or I'm throwing you in the furnace. I give you one more chance when the music plays, you bow. And this is one of my favorite lines given in the Bible, because these three young men answer the king of most of the known world at that time. Ne Nebuchadnezzar's army ruled almost everything. These three young men, still standing, looked at Nebuchadnezzar and said, in verse 17 of chapter 3, if this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. I mean, this, is, this, is, this is powerful statement. I mean, it is. What they're saying is, we believe that God can deliver us from your fiery furnace, but even if he chooses not, not to, we will not bow to any God but him, period. I mean, they made a stand when nobody else would. Everybody else bowed, but not these three young men. So Nebuchadnezzar was ticked. I mean, he was furious. He, he, he all of a sudden orders, heat the furnace seven times hotter, so they heat this furnace up seven times. It's so hot that, I mean, you could feel the heat way back from it. You didn't have to be close to it to feel it. So he had to pick three or four or five or six, I don't know how many men, it doesn't say, of his, most, his strongest warriors to throw these three young men into the fiery furnace. And that fire was so hot that when those guys got tossed in, the, the soldiers died. They put them in there. You ever... Wonder, though, what they're thinking. I always, I always think about things like this. I read between lines in the Bible. Do you do that? I, I, read, the, I read, and I think, what, what, what were they thinking as they're carried up to be? Because they were human like you and I. What would you be thinking if you're about to get tossed and you can feel the heat as you're getting closer? I mean, the closer you get, the hotter it gets. I mean, you, you know what heat feels like. Seven times hotter, a furnace, good grief. This, fire, this, this furnace was so hot, it killed men who didn't even go into it. They just got close to it. That's how hot it was. 
These guys threw their, those three young men in, and all the way I was thinking, I'm thinking if they're human like me, well, this could be it. Haven't you ever had those moments in your lives? I, had, I remember, when, remember when I got hit by the semi? I got hit by a semi driving down the highway. The, the semi decided to come into my lane, hit my back tire, about, about my back tire, threw me. Instead of throwing me under the truck, it threw me way out there spinning 360s. Going 60 miles an hour doing 360s is not what I prefer to do, okay? My first thought was, this is going to hurt. <laughs> I don't know. If that's what those three young men were thinking, when uh, their first thought was, this, this, is, this is, well, hopefully it's going to be quick. And imagine their shock that they get into the fiery furnace and they just stand up and they're walking around and they look out there and everybody that threw them in is dead. Now, the Bible doesn't say that they saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth man. So we don't know if these three young men ever knew that somebody was out in that fire with them, but you have to think they were thinking, this is awesome. I mean, good. oh, wow, we were in a fire, and I don't even, it feels like I'm in air conditioning. This is awesome. And they're just walking around in the fire going, you see how hot this is? This is cool. I mean, like, I'm not walking on coals. It's red hot, and I don't even notice it. My, pant, my clothes aren't burning. My hair isn't burning. You know, I, I think after a second, they started praising the Lord. I think they knew they knew immediately, our God has stepped in here. I don't, and, and, and maybe they even sensed his presence because he was in the furnace with them. Because Nebuchadnezzar says, I see a fourth man and he looks like the son of God. And then he calls him out and these three guys just walk right out of the fiery furnace. It says their clothes weren't, they didn't even smell like smoke. Their hair wasn't singed. I mean, what a powerful statement of the almighty power of God. Sometimes freedom cost comes with a price, though, because those three young men had to take a stand. There came a point where I had to say, we will not bow. That might have been the scariest moment of their lives, but they knew they had to. It's just like Daniel, when they threatened the lion's den, Daniel, it says, immediately, because you couldn't pray to any other God, it says, immediately when he heard the news, he ran home. And he prayed just like usual with a window open looking to the east. Looking towards Jerusalem, which would have been west, sorry. Okay. He's looking towards Jerusalem, just like normal, even opens the window. These guys were built from the same. They knew that freedom came with a price. See, we should know this too. I mean, look at, I mean, uh, we had... We had Glenn here this morning. He was in Vietnam. Glenn shared with me that he still struggles with uh, uh, dreams. Yeah, he wakes up just cold sweat, you know, because of, of Vietnam. He wake because he has these dreams of being there. I mean, it's just it, it's still it's still going on. It's nightmares. The things you saw. So, but but I asked him when you were on your way there, did you feel fear? And he goes, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, because you begin to think, is this it? Is this it? Every time there's a battle, and we are in a battle church, we don't get freedom without a fight. There's a scripture in John where Jesus talks about freedom. In John chapter 8, he talks about the cost of freedom. John 8, verse 31, starting with verse 31, it says, So Jesus said to the Jews, who had believed him. So these are the ones who believed in him. Abide in my word. You, you are true. If, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now he says that if you abide in his word, you'll know the truth, because the word is the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him. Now these are, his, these are believers. Hey, we're offspring of Abraham. We've never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say we, you will be free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son 
sets you free, you will be free indeed. But what did the son have to do to bring freedom? He had to die on the cross for us. There wasn't freedom without a cost. It cost him his life. He couldn't just, he couldn't just set us free. Sin has a cost. And all of sin and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. We needed a perfect person to give his life. So Jesus paid the price willingly, the cost for our sin. Here's the thing. Freedom still comes with a cost from us. Too many times as Christians, I think, even as Americans, we, we take freedom for granted. I mean, we do. We, it's like we think everybody should be like this. See, sometimes because of our understanding, we, we look at people because they're not like us. They're weird. What they, why do they do that? You know, but when God gives freedom, he that hath the Son is free indeed. The cost to us is this. It's found in Luke. If you want to turn in your Bibles, in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, it says this. And he said to all, that, that includes us, he said to all, if anyone would come after me, that means if you want to follow him, if you want to follow Jesus, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me for whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Here's the answer. The cost of freedom, if I really want that freedom that Jesus is talking about when he says, he that hath the son is free indeed. He's, and then he says, if you follow me, you have to die to self daily. Here's, that's the biggest battle you will ever face in your life. You. You know, we like to blame everything on the devil. It's all his fault, you know. He's bad. And well, he is. But he only uses my weaknesses. I mean, he does. That's that's all he goes after is my weaknesses. That's how I fall. And, and all of us have this weakness. We don't like to admit it, but it's called pride and selfishness. We all have that too. Self-centeredness. We worry about ourselves more than others. He says, forget about everything, everybody else. Every day, let, it, let your life be all about Jesus. That, that changes your perspective. I, I, I see other people as more important than me. Because Jesus saw everybody else as more important than him. Think about it. Everybody, when he's on the cross, these people are mocking him. They're spitting on him. They're, they're saying everything. And, and, and he has this freedom. And he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. See, when we deny ourselves, it no longer becomes all about my life. I don't care about what I gain in it, what I have. It all becomes about I want to please him. I want to be like him. I want to, I want to walk like him, talk like him. I want to know Jesus. And then so I begin every morning I get up and I'm like, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to follow you. Help me not to be selfish. Help me not to be self-centered. Help me not to think of myself and my own desires and my own wishes, but help me my life to always bring you glory. Every day, he says, pick up the cross, which is an instrument of death, and follow me. See, when I do that, my life becomes... There's this freedom that happens because my life becomes not about. That's the, the freedom God intended in the first place. And when I, when I follow him first, there's joy. I mean, there's just absolute joy. I, I love the joy that God gives because nobody can steal it. In fact, nothing can steal it. I mean, I have, I have this joy in me when my parents died. There, I mean, that's sorrow, but at the same time, there's this joy because I know that I know I'm going to see him again. Why? Because I walk with him. I walk with Jesus. They walk with Jesus. I'm going to walk right with Jesus too. So uh, uh, yesterday morning, uh, the pastor that leads our area, our, our region with the Assemblies of God, Don Ross, his mother, his grandmother passed away at 107. 
when she was saved, she was 43. And, and she was saved at St. John Assembly of God. I don't know if you know where St. John's is, but it's just this little tiny town in eastern Washington, south of Spokane, in, in the Palouse area. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's a tiny church. She attended there her whole life. She just passed away. And, and he shared, uh, she just walked into glory this morning at 107. He goes, I want to follow her. If you want to be free, church, then you need to follow Jesus. And Jesus' example was to lay down his life. You and I need to lay our, down our lives. It can't be about me anymore. It can't be selfish desire. It has to be about Jesus. That he gets the glory. Then there's this freedom that comes. Oh, the joy, the peace. Um, the Bible calls it peace that passes understanding, which means you can't even understand it. That, that's the peace I had when my parents died. Now, you shouldn't have that kind of peace. You should be all messed up, but you have this peace. You know, when, and there's been so many moments in my life that that peace that passes understanding has been overwhelming. And I know I... I've shared the story before, but when my, my father-in-law died, I think I was 22. So Nita would have been about 21. They're just kids. He died of cancer at age 47. And um, I'd been praying for God to heal him, and I was really believing it. I mean, with all my heart, God was going to heal him. But God decided... You know, I'm taking him home. <laughs> then my mother-in-law, she asked me this crazy thing. I want you to sing this song of his. Well, there were two things that bothered me. One, I didn't think I could sing because I, I was worried I'd cry. Second thing, it was a Western song, and I don't like Westerns. But I'm sorry for all you that like country music. I, I just, and his was the old style country that, that I just did. Yeah, it just makes me want to sing like this, and I just can't do that. It just kind of bugs me but uh <laughs> sorry <laughs> I was a rock and roller from an early age okay I always liked that more can't help it uh, but I said I would because you do things for people you love and even though I felt all this sorrow I began to sing that song and I'll never forget singing the first verse and then as I started to sing that chorus, this is a song he wrote, by the way. Um, I got to the chorus. The chorus says, I'm not drifting out to sea anymore since Jesus came and knocked on my heart's door. Such a wondrous love I've never felt before. I'm not drifting out to sea anymore. When I started to sing that chorus, I had a huge choir singing behind me. I'll never forget it because it was real. There was nobody there. Not a soul. It's why I remember the song so well. I mean, seriously, when you sing a song and angels are singing behind you, you never forget it. I, and I, I, it, was, it was one of those moments like... It was so powerful and so real that I turned around. It's just me and my guitar. There's nobody else. I turned around to look. Who's there? There was nobody there but my dad, and he can't sing a lick, so I knew it wasn't him. <laughs> if dad sings, you knew it. It was not a pretty thing. But dad wasn't singing. Somebody was, but as soon as I turned around to look, it was gone. But it, I immediately just... This, this peace just came on me right in that church. And the Lord was just speaking to me saying, I got this. I got this. I got this. See, there's this freedom that comes with Jesus even when life spins out of control and we don't know where we're going. We don't know what to do. Just like this world is chaos around us, God is still in control and I have this freedom that comes with Jesus. When I walk with him, I don't have to worry. He's got it all under control. There is freedom 
in Jesus when I die to me and live for him. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just want to, I want to thank you. Because in my life, you've given me opportunities to go to countries that aren't free. I've, I've been in Haiti and I've been in Bolivia and I've been in Swaziland. And, or they don't have freedom like we do. We have so taken advantage of it. And I want to thank you that I was born in a family that's taught that Jesus is freedom. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he's the answer to life. I want to thank you for that opportunity that you've given to me. But Lord, many of us didn't have that opportunity. But now's our chance. We have this opportunity to walk in freedom. To know that we know that we know that every day we get up and we follow Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And there is freedom in Jesus. There is peace in Jesus. There is joy in Jesus. There is love in Jesus. And all we have to do is let go of self and follow. So Lord, this morning I, I pray for all of us. Lord, help us to lay down self this morning. Just as you did before you went to the cross, your flesh cried out, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But then you said the words that we need to say, but Lord, not my will, but thine be done. So Father, right now this morning, we ask, Lord God, we say, not our will, but yours be done. Lord, may we die to self and follow you. May each and every one of us just lay down our will, our passions, our desires, and say, and make you our passion, our desire, that Lord, we will follow you. We will do your will. We will do what you want. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. I pray that, Lord, you would be glorified in us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we need to know you more. So, Lord, help us to follow you. And by following you, Lord, help us to pick up that cross daily, which means dying to self and following you. And I thank you for it, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, I ask it. And I thank you for it, Lord. With our heads bowed, I just want to ask really quick. I just really feel like I need to ask if, there's anyone here would just slip up their hand and say, you know, I, I haven't been dying to self and, and the Lord's just tapping me on the shoulder this morning that I, I need to die to self and just, because I want to follow Jesus. You just slip up your hand and say, that's me. That's me this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Just slip up your hand. You put it right back down. Anyone else? So this is what I want us to pray. Just pray it with me. Dear Jesus, I just ask, Father, that you would forgive me. Forgive us, Lord, that we have tried in our pride to, to make it through without you. Lord, help us to die to ourselves and live for you. In every area of our lives, may we live for you. May our work be pleasing to you, O oh Lord. May the way we lead our families be pleasing to you, O oh Lord. May, every, may our conversations be pleasing to you, O oh Lord. May everything that we do or say please you. May we put you in the center of our lives, Lord. 
your will, not ours. Your plan, not ours. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. And we thank you for it, Lord. I pray, Lord, for every one of us that, Lord God, you would help us to walk in victory, to walk in joy, knowing that as we follow the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That you will never leave us, never forsake us. You have, there is victory in Jesus. No matter what we're going through, there's peace and joy because we are, we are going the way we were made to go by following you. So Lord, bless us, keep us, use us, be glorified in us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. And we give you glory and praise for it. Go with us this week and use us for your glory in your name. Amen. 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 Lord bless you. Have an awesome, awesome week in Jesus. Amen. <laughs>